back. Every time I go to sleep, I just wake up out of my sleep sweating. This 14-year-old boy doesn't want to show his face. He says he's traumatized after what happened to him at school last week. He's a student on the ground. A member of the school staff is seen pinning him down, first with his knee on one of the child's shoulder. And wrapping his hands around the kid's neck. The teen says the altercation started after he refused to take off his hoodie. Something his aunt and legal guardian says he should have done when he was asked to do so. I know these kids, I know my nephews, they have attitude problems, they, they can get very, very rude. Hello everyone, it's your sister Roland and all I need is a few minutes to talk about what happened at Horace Mann Middle School. This is a middle school in Miami-Dade County. So the video of what happened to this young boy, I'm not going to put it in this video. I will link, I will put the Facebook link down below. Hopefully it still works. If it does not, I'm sure you'll be able to find it someplace else. But I'm just saying that because... So you will be able to understand the context of what I will be talking about in this video. So anyway, I am very familiar with this middle school because when my children were leaving elementary, this was supposed to be their home school. This was supposed to be their home school. And a lot of people in Miami, Miami knows that this school has is not it's not the school but the ch many children in the school is are very problematic so and a lot of the kids that i know bef when before they even went to the school they they changed a lot i mean these kids some of these kids were like the sweetest kids and then they just changed after coming from the school yeah and you know it's the influence and then you know they give into the influence but I've seen the school change a lot of kids. But not only that school, many schools. But Horace Mann is known for this. So my kids did not even have a chance to go to the school. I transferred them out. So this situation, I was under the impression that it happened yesterday, which was March 7th. But it actually happened last week. So if, you, if you're going to watch the, my screenshots video the second part to this video i talk like it was it happened yesterday but it actually happened last week so but everybody's talking about it today because um of course the news picked it up today that's why it's it's like it's it happened yesterday but it actually happened last week so what happened was in, in many schools in Miami-Dade County, first of all, they don't want the kids to be wearing the hoodies. You can wear the hoodies, but you're not, you're not supposed to have the hoodie over your head because it has, like, they have, they say different reason why they don't want it because it shows gang affiliation. You know um, how the young boy, Trayvon Martin, has had lost their lives. People was doing that to protest. So it's different reasons why, but they don't allow this they don't allow the children to have the hoodies over their head in the school you could do that when you out 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 of out, out of the school you know you're walking home or you're walking to the school but as soon as you step on campus you're supposed to take it off so allegedly the security guard told this young boy to take off the hoodie to take off the hoodie and even in the video there there is somebody says that they told him to take off the hoodie he refused he refused and i because we don't see that part i don't know what led up to the security guard you know for this young boy to be on the floor and then for the security guard to be on top of him you know choking uh, um you know pressing on his neck um and putting a knee on him I'm not sure what happened, but it's evident even when this young boy was on the floor, the stuff that he was saying, he most likely have, may have said something, may have said something that triggered the security guard and the security guard went off and he lost his cool, which is not good. And I must say this, this was handled very poorly. 
<clears throat> and I understand these kids disrespectful. Yes, they are. They don't respect. Uh, many of these kids are very disrespectful. Not all, but many of them. But we have to, as adults, to keep our cool. Because even in the video, when when the young boy is on the floor, the, what, what he was saying, I was like, hmm, did you, did you, did you set the security guard up? Because it was stuff he was saying. It's like, did you guys plan this? You know? So we have to stop giving people ammunition and um, we have to stop responding and reacting for clicks for views for lawsuits we got to stop this even if it's it may be difficult it's easier said than done but come on now if whatever all said and done this this man could <clears throat> if he's been doing security guard with the school system all his life um he may not be able to do that after everything is said and done. And this is a prime example of burnout. This is a prime example of burnout. When you have to use excessive force like this where you didn't have to. Because in the screen, one of the screenshots, this young girl said that they asked her to take off the hoodie. She did not want to take off the hoodie and she got suspended. She This didn't happen. So this is a clear example of burnout and then when you when you see you're feeling that burnout that means so he may have felt um burnout exhausted from constantly having to tell these children to take off your hoodies and then for them to be disrespecting so when you see you are getting frustrated you're doing stuff like it's time to leave come on this is not this is not worth it it's time to leave and obviously you have to learn the hard way but this this is this was this was a clear example if you don't know what burnout is this is what it is he it was too much for him you know too much in the sense that dang these kids don't listen just exhausted with just tell giving you sip just take your hoodie off what is so difficult about that but how he responded was not that you can't justify that the you can yeah these kids they just you no come on that was that was unnecessary on you on top this little kid yeah this little kid and you a big guy that don't make no sense so i have to say that but in all reality all this stems back to the parenting because number one this young boy is living with his aunt where's his mother the aunt is the legal guardian so first that's that's a that's a number one that's the, the, there's there's a problem where's his mother where is the father you have these children and then you leave them with family members well this is the first time well many aunts are raising children most of the time it's grandma and then they have to deal with this so the child is acting out most of the time these kids act out because nobody cares about them. Nobody really cares about them. And then I went on this young man's page and then for him to say his motto is do not trust anyone. Why? How you, this young man, now because now he's a minor. When they, you know, they want to, sometimes they want to act grown. But in certain situations like this, they minors. Okay, you are minor and you already have a motto, don't trust anyone. What has happened in your life that you can't trust people? That's another question. Here is another one. Why we don't hold ourselves accountable as parents to say we have dropped the ball. For your child to be disrespected, they can't even follow a simple command, a simple rule. They can't follow, just take off your hoodie. And then you blaming, this is this, this is that. Oh, uh, uh, and people condoning this. Oh, he didn't do nothing wrong. What is this? Come on, we got to do, we got to do better. But a lot of people, they not going to do better. Because we could say you could, we got to do better all we want. But a lot of people just not going to do better. They not. And then the only time a lot of people care about these kids is when a check is in. So that's when 
people care about, especially these young black boys, because when a check is in, now everybody care. And, you know, a lot of people, sometimes we get mad, we get frustrated because, wow, this, this you know, they're going to reward bad behavior because when you look at it, uh, they might have to do a payout because of what the security guard did. But I, I never get mad about stuff like that because, first of all, now the art is looking for a good lawyer. Good lawyers cost money. And there's a strategy that you need to implement in when you're choosing a lawyer for this type of case. Because when it's all said and done, what if you do get a settlement, sometimes you don't even walk out with anything anyways. And then if you do, most of the time, most of the time within months, this money is gone. This money is gone. Because sometimes the person doesn't have the financial literacy, uh, um, they not finan they don't have the financial literacy to invest their money to make it grow. And even if they try to do it, you're not ed you're not financially educated to make that money grow. And then everybody know you got you, you there's certain places that you live, and then something like this happen. Everybody know you're gonna get a check. So now every cousin and friend and neighbor, you know, everybody's showing up trying to be your friend and trying to help you out because when you get paid, they want a piece. And sometimes you don't even get nothing to give anybody a piece. But who cares about that? So most of the time, money that comes in this manner, it never lasts. It never lasts. Sometimes if it lasts for a few years less than five years but then the person is worse off than they were before because they were not ready for that type of amount um, um, you sometimes even ten thousand dollars is too much for a person because they're not ready because they can't manage something like that and even the aunt admitted that yeah i know these kids have she even admitted they have um attitude problems and stuff like that you can, con you can condemn what the security guard did and then still call out the bad behavior of this young boy. You can do that. You can still do that. What the security guard did was wrong, but this young man was also wrong. Why you just didn't comply? You are a student. You when you're a student in a school, they have policies, they have rules that you must follow. If you don't follow them, then there's supposed to be consequences. That, what the security guard did, was, was not supposed to be a consequence, but there is supposed to be a consequence. And then when, whenever they settle or whatever happens in this case, what is that showing the other children? Oh, uh, oh. My mom, my mom, or my dad, we already struggling. Oh, I could do this and then we could get paid. You don't know what people's thinking. You don't know what people, some things, some things that happen is a domino effect that happens. So now other kids are going to try um, something because they want to make a case. You don't see sometimes you, you be driving people, be coming out of nowhere. Jump in front of your car because everybody looking for a case. Now everybody looking for a case. But a lot of y'all, y'all just going to get an empty box. You're not going to get a case. Now everybody care. Looking for a good lawyer. But why y'all didn't care? Hey, what you doing in class? How your grades doing? You respecting your teachers? What's going on? When the teachers call you, you don't even pick up the phone and stuff like that. To even know what's going on with your band. But now, oh, now we got a case. Now we're going to sue. Not everybody care. Well, why y'all didn't care before? Why you didn't care before? Just like I said um, in a screenshot video. <laughs> that it was an anniversary of something that happened to him. It was coming up or it passed already and he put it on the story. So obviously something is going on with this young boy. But who cares enough? Nobody cares enough to find out nobody cares because these kids are just a paycheck that's all they guys that's all they are to many of these parents out here many of us you are supposed to train up a child in the way they should go 
But if you're not training up your child, well, they just become the product of their environment. And whatever goes on in your environment, that is what you will have. Yeah, I would say we got to do better, but a lot of people, especially looking at those comments, some people just not going to do better. They just waiting for opportunity. They just let these kids run wild and just waiting for opportunity to get a check. Because in reality, they don't even like their kids. Because number one, that child was supposed to be their meal ticket. That child was supposed to keep a man. That child was supposed to open doors for them. Oh, that child was supposed to take them out of poverty and sometimes don't work out like that. I don't know. So it's going to be a second part to this video because I didn't want it to be too long. See, it's already long already. So it'll be a second part of me going through the different screenshots that I found concerning this, concerning this situation. But I don't know. I wish the security got it best. Hopefully he learns. From, I'm sure he's going to learn from this lesson. But it was it was too much excessive force. It was too much. Come on. It was just too much. Force should, yes, force definitely needed to be um used, but it would in that sense it was too much excessive force. And um uh, bad behaviors on these kids' parts is usually just a symptom of what something else that's going on. It's re it reminded me of a video that I had to watch in the class that I was taking for the trauma and this guy he was in charge of like this juvenile detention thing and it was this young man he never gave any problems and then there was one time he just um told the that I think he told him happy birthday and this young man went out on a tangent he was he went, they had, they had to take three to four staff members to restrain him. And then, thank goodness, this man, he, he took some training in trauma, um, trauma, and he had trauma informed training, excuse me, trauma informed training. And then he went, you know, when everything was calmed down in the time of peace, prepare for war. When everything is calmed down, he spoke to his young man. He asked him, what, what happened? You, you should know, you know, what's going on, you know? And then that's what he told, then he told him, you know, this is what, what happened when you told me this, this is, uh, uh, this is why I reacted that way. And after that, I think in his facility, they rarely use restraints on these children. Some of these kids are, well, had very bad behaviors, but they rarely use restraint after, you know, seeking to know why, why, what happened to you? Why are you, why are you doing this? Why did you act this way? Why did you choose to act this way? So anyway, that's all I had to say on this situation. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.